Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to share something that I've been really excited about this past summer and implementing in the school year. I want to show you guys my bullet journal and my teacher setup for this year. I, I, I really don't think there's a lot of resources out there for teachers that want to start bullet journaling as their main method of planning. So I want to flip through, show you guys some things that I've implemented, people that I've drawn from in influencing my bullet journal, as well as some supplies that I use for keeping up with bullet journaling. So this is my last day of summer before I have to go and set up my classroom and I've been have all the butterflies and excitement about the back to school season so the way I've overcome this is by going through my bullet journal and planning out um, at least setting up the month of September in my planner and it got me super excited and I want to share my teacher bullet journal setup with you so let's get to it all right guys so let's go over my bullet journal together this is my purple artist sloth michaels bullet journal so i picked this bullet journal up for five dollars it is about the si same size as the traditional loik term 1917 but it, this is only five dollars so far it seems to be just as good uh, just in my experience of looking through loik terms at the bookstore this seems to be a good comparable model it has a hardback as well as an elastic cover band uh, for security and keeping your pages shut and secure. It has two uh, bookmark ribbons that come with it already glued in. I think I'll probably add more ribbons later as I find things to bookmark like calendars and weekly trackers and spreads. The my personal bullet journal is in purple, but these actually come in almost every color you can think of at Michael's when you go there. This is the smaller model. It is the hardback version, six inches by eight inches. So like I said, this is the smaller one. There are also larger bullet journals, especially if you want something to really spread your notes out in your teacher planner. Um, a lot of people use a larger one. I like the small size of this one. It does fit in most bags and purses that I've had. The vinyl sticker on the front, I actually added this to customize it. It's a Husky sticker to remind me of my dogs while I'm at work. I actually picked this up at a local sticker shop that I went to. However, I'm sure you can pick something similar to this up on Amazon. Um, I encourage you to, to, I encourage you to customize your bullet journal to make you happy, to make you pick it up and use it more. So that's why I added this little detail. So let's get started. When you open up the bullet journal, you're going to see a blank front cover. I added this detail to the front. So here's my name and some of my personal information. You're gonna see throughout the video that I have pink sticky notes to cover any personal information. So here I have a dandelion or two dandelions blowing in the wind. I did get this idea off of Pinterest and I'll put a link below for you to look at that. So I started my numbering here uh, with a Roman numeral one since this isn't actually getting started in my setup. So all of my I guess preemptive pages or my uh, index pages are marked with a Roman numeral. Then I open up, there's two blank pages. I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything with that, but I also numbered those with the Roman numeral. On my next page, I have my index. So in all bullet journals, it usually has an index where you list the description of the page that you have and then the page number. Because I'm not sure if I'm gonna run out of room on the index, I'm only going to highlight the major pages, especially the ones that I'm going to flip to. So this is my first page in my bullet journal. This is where the grid layout starts, the dotted grids. And I also started here, this is my page number one. This design I got off of a logo slash 
um, design I found off of Pinterest. It's not necessarily a bullet journal design, but I thought it was it was useful to give me guidance throughout the school year. The design reads, stay humble and hustle hard. Uh, I, I put 2018 to 2019, like I said, to kind of focus and give myself a theme for the year. On my next page, this is my year at a glance for my personal life. This is uh, mostly birthdays, holidays, and um, things like that, things related to family. I actually did design this myself using this simple Calendex model that you can find in most year at a glance bullet journal spreads. This I also uh, designed using a Calendex and allowing myself to have some room for a description on the side. This is my school calendar. So any and all holidays and activities and school closings all related to my district, I'm gonna keep in here. That way I can easily flip back when I'm planning and see what's coming up in the school schedule. So as you can see in August, opening activities for teachers in my district is the 23rd through the 30th. That way when I'm planning ahead of time in my, my monthly spreads, I can flip back here and see what days I have off of school or if there's a major event occurring. So I would like to stop here and mention that this is my, this bullet journal is not just my teacher bullet journal, but it's also my personal bullet journal. In the past, I've carried two planners around with me, one for personal and one for teaching. And I, it just gets really annoying. I usually abandon one at the end of the day. So this year I decided to combine my personal planner with my teacher planner and see how it goes. Um, for me, my day is kind of blends together. I don't necessarily, um, when I plan, I don't think about, oh, this is at school versus this is at home. So I do have some personal things in here, some personal spreads. So this is my travel log. I did get this off of Pinterest, I believe, or it might have been, I think I saw it on Google Image Search. It might have been off Etsy. I'll put the link below for this one and this spread as well. This is a travel log and basically these are little suitcases and you just fill in where you traveled throughout the year, which is pretty cute visual way to track where you've been. And then this is my savings tracker. So my goal for this upcoming year is to save $500 a month. As I save that amount of money, I can fill in my jar for each level. Um, this is me and my husband's goal per month and see where it can take us. But yeah, I also got, I believe I got this off Pinterest and I'll put the link below for my savings tracker. I have to say this spread is completely taken from a YouTuber called My Life in a Bullet and I'll put her link below for how she actually drew this out. I really liked her idea. I, I added some of my own colors and, and um, I would say marker undertones. However, this is completely from her. I want to mention that the cool thing about a bullet journal is that if you see something that you really like, you can put it in your bullet journal if you think you can draw it. For me, um, I did not like a, the traditional Erin Condren planner because it limited what I could do with it. Whereas this, if I see something I liked on Pinterest or YouTube, I can immediately copy it in. However, I do not claim any rights to, to this idea or saying that I'm doing this the first time. This is a complete copy from My Life in a Bullet and I'll put the link in the description below or maybe even a card up above this video. Um, but if you see something you like, you can put it in your bullet journal and customize it to what makes you feel good. This is a, this is a complimentary page collage that I put together. I just took some pictures that I thought went with this theme and reminded me of the summertime and clouds and influenced this paper airplane theme. And I printed them off on my printer and cut them off in a collage pattern. So with different shapes and I laid them out on the page to see how I thought they worked out. And then I glued them in. So I think this is a great idea to kind of give yourself almost an inspiration picture collage or an inspiration board that, that kind of sets the mood for the rest of the month. I also added some washi tape on the side 
here to bring in some of the blue colors that I was feeling for this spread as well as I kind of doodled some little accents here. And I think my life in a bullet, she, she emphasizes that you can doodle on top of pictures to add more meaning and context and, and kind of personalize it to meet your bullet journal needs. So this monthly spread for August is also influenced by uh, my life in a bullet's full theme for August, I believe of 2017. So go ahead and check her out. This is my monthly month at a glance where I can put in small details about how my month is going. Up here I also have a key that highlights in which color what event I will be writing in here. So for example in purple uh, I just have a regular event whereas in light purple this is a church event and then in um, orange here all events related to my dog. So I go to puppy class and they have vet appointments. Anything that's orange in this calendar is related to them. So if you haven't noticed yet, I'm only numbering the right corner of the, or the, the right page bottom right hand corner. This kind of saves me time so I don't have to number every page. And since I'm mostly flipping through on the right, uh, that's where I'm gonna be looking at page numbers. Okay. So this left page is a is something that I adapted from a bullet journal. I believe the bullet journal blog, I'll put a link there, as well as this is a traditional bullet journal habit tracker for a month. So this is my fall bucket list. I kind of drew up things that was going on this fall that I knew was coming up and even making my first YouTube video, which I actually did, um, I did already and fall hasn't started as well as my first teacher vlog. However, this is something good to visually fill out to see how, how you're accomplishing your goals in a season. This is my monthly habit tracker for August. This has been kind of hard to fill out every day and I'm not sure if I'm going to follow through with this habit tracker. Um, but basically, I have a square for each habit that I wanna do every day and it's done in the Calendex model uh, which is a traditional bullet journal technique where you put the day of the week and the number and then you fill in based on the color what habit you did for that day. So this is an example of one of my summer spreads. So because I'm not lesson, lesson planning during the summer, I just did daily um, I just did daily sections where I spread them out. I gave myself a, a third of the page approximately and then I listed out my tasks for that day. I'd cross them out simply with an X if I completed them or I would put a carrot sign next to the, the bullet saying that I migrated that task for the next day. This spread on the left hand side is my book and I also added a PD tracker. So I have three shelves on this bookshelf. One shelf is labeled fiction, so anything that I read this summer or this school year for fiction. Um, I'm not sure if you can see in the video, but I did read Stephen King's The Outsider as my fiction text. Um, I haven't, I've been reading here and there not some nonfiction, but I has, haven't finished anything. Uh, at the bottom here I have PD, so I actually decided to fill this bottom shelf with everything that I've done for PD this summer and kind of the title of the PD I put on the book spine. That way I can kind of in an appealing way track what I've done for professional development. This is my YouTube tracking page. Th this I designed myself to keep track of what I'm doing on my YouTube channel, some ideas I have the subscriber count and some deadlines as well as set up kind of um, as well as things that I can do for setting up my account and my social media presence. So this is my expense tracker. This has not been going well for me. I set up a 
because me and my husband are going through um, some things financially, we wanted to track our spending a little bit better and and watch exactly what we've been doing. We've also been doing the cash envelope system, the Dave Ramsey uh, Financial Peace University cash system. And this is a great way to figure out what your monthly budget is. However, I'm feeling that the best way to do this is to keep your receipts and then retroactively go back and fill this grid out. I have it for days of the week or days of the month here and then on this left side I have categories so for example the first category is my mortgage which comes out about the fifth of every month um, so I would write in there how much I spent on the mortgage. So this is another one of my weeklies um, or really it's a daily uh, daily my daily spread for my summer calendar where I'm not lesson planning. In this right hand corner I have actually a meal tracker. Because me and my husband wanted to start eating healthier, I tracked our meals for the week to, to kind of check to see retroactively how we're doing. This week we did awful. As you can see there's McDonald's and Taco Bell in there. Uh, it was quite a busy week. So the next couple pages are coming primarily from Alexandra Plants. Now she's a wonderful YouTuber and she also has a blog post completely on teacher bullet journals. And so I want to give her credit here. This is in no way my own idea or anything like that. I did take her Bloom's Taxonomy page spread where you see at the top um, we have all of the different verbs and keywords here for each section of Bloom's Taxonomy as well as activities that you can implement for each level. So you're going to see this in a lot of teacher bullet journal videos as well as blog posts about it. This comes from her and her idea. So I want to give her credit. As you can see this this pyramid sets up Bloom's Taxonomy. At the top we have the highest order which is creativity. At the bottom is the lowest level which is remembering. On the left side we have verbs that you can use in your objectives on your on your whiteboard when you're having students copy their objective you can reference this as a word bank when creating those objectives as well as activities you can implement for for achieving that level. All right guys sorry about that my my battery actually died on my camera um, but this is a great layout like I said I got from Alexandra plans that lays out all the keywords you need to set up your objectives to hit each level of Bloom's Taxonomy as well as activities that you can achieve to meet those objectives. So these next pages are mostly coming from Alexandra Plans, uh, my website and password log, keeping track of all of my, my teacher accounts. For example, my donor's shoes page, that's a new one that I just created. So I had to create um, a new username and password that was different. So I put that in my password log. This is a place for my bell schedules to go. This is um, for the different lunches and things like that that go for high school as well as any two hour delayed openings or early dismissals. We'll go here for me to quick reference. Because we have four periods and an A day, B day block schedule, things can get kind of complicated if we have a snow delay or a PD early dismissal. So another Alexandra Plans highlight, this is the teacher dashboard. This is a good weekly spread to go to where you can put these sticky notes in to keep track of what you're doing for that week. Um, but you, when you're done, you can just rip the sticky notes off and put a new one on for the next week. That way you're kind of, you don't have to set this up every week. This is a great spread to go back to. So for example, if you're, if you need to jot down some things to do or some, some supplies you need to get, you can just write them on the sticky note, probably put the date on it. That way you can keep track of what you need to do for that week. But then the next week, you don't have to set this back up again. So I'm really interested to see how this works out in the upcoming weeks when I'm back to school and the hustle and bustle and there's a bunch of meetings and things still to set up in my classroom, how this is going to work productivity wise. So this is a teaching goals page and a student quotes page, again an Alexandra Plans resource. Um, some of my goals for this year in my teaching is to practice college and career readiness 
skills for my students. I don't think this uh, you can. This is very visually appealing. The, these colors didn't come out the way I wanted to, wanted them to. But if you can't read it, it says college and career readiness, and then the two ways that I'm going to achieve that is through note taking. Um, so working on my students' note taking abilities as well as technology, implementing technology. I actually put as my first kind of task I completed was I went to a Google Classroom training, um, and that's like my first step toward achieving this technology goal. My second, my second goal is reflective teaching. So I'm going to achieve that in two ways, through journaling and through data analysis. So um, actually setting up a bullet journal itself is part of my journaling, but I would also like to reflect at the end of each lesson on how, how the lesson went. So we'll see how I implement that goal as well as data analysis. So here I wanna kinda keep track of what my students' scores are when they're different standardized tests as well as formative assessments. So I'm going to be in the next couple of weeks working on how I'm going to achieve these goals more in a more um, concrete way. So this student quotes page is those things, those funny things that your students say that you never want to forget because they're so hilarious. Um, I know this past year teaching seniors especially they they're the funniest kids and I wish I had written all of what they said down because uh, it's really funny to think about um, and I also missed uh, on this page my theme for this year is rigor so increasing my college and career readiness as well as keeping uh, an organized uh, teacher setup so that's part of this is the bullet journaling but as well as my classroom staying organized So this next page is also an Alexandra Plans page. This is my curriculum spread. So I actually have some sticky notes of some skills that I was was wanted to write down for each of my preps. So like I mentioned before, I have three preps this year. So this curriculum guide is super important for me because I have to keep track of teaching three different books. So the way this works is this is a calendex on the side that goes from 1 to 31 which represents the days of the month as well as the day of the week is next to it. So there's these little letters. It starts with Sunday and ends with Sunday. So when you write in your different months, you actually adjust it to, to meet the needs of when the month starts and when it ends. So for example, February won't end on the 31st. It'll end this year on the 28th. So how that goes through, it's kind of confusing at first to look at, but once you, once you lay it out and, and you know, mark it out with your pencil and then go back over with pen, you start to understand how it works. So each one of these sequences, each one of these color combinations, so this blue, this is like an orange color and the purple, this is all representing my quarter one. And each individual column is each of my preps. So this first blue prep is my pacing guide for my 10 standard. In this quarter, they're going to read Animal Farm and they're going to complete a rhetorical analysis. So you can actually track this unit all the way through and it looks like it ends November 9th for our students. Uh, the next color is orange. This tracks through my pacing guide for 10 honors. So these are my honor students. They're going to be reading for quarter one Julius Caesar and also completing the same skill, which is a rhetorical analysis. That also ends all the the first quarter ends on the same day for everyone. And then my third and final prep, this is my, this purple color is my pacing guide for quarter one for my 12 co-taught students. So this is my special ed students. The, for the first quarter, I have the kite runner and then narrative imitation as their skill that they need to learn for this quarter. Um, and then not all of our curriculum is set in stone, so I didn't want to map out the rest of the curriculum, but I do have it already color coded so I can just fill it in since I do have the start and end dates for each quarter. So I'm going to be looking at the curriculum later on to see what um, I want to do with their different skill sets, but like I said, I want to leave it until the curriculum set in stone. I also have a space here for any resources that I want to use to to 
practice the skill sets that they need to work on. This is also a great place to put links to curriculum resources like their textbook that's online and they can also listen to it. So we'll see how I fill this part out. So this next uh, spread is also from Alexandra Plans. I don't want to keep repeating it, but I think it's important to give credit where credit is due. She came up with this idea of a PD tracker, and so far this summer I've done quite a few PDs. Um, I put the number of the number of the PD I put on the left hand side just to keep track of how many sessions I've done this year. So, so far this summer I've already done seven sessions. I put the title of it that is given to me um, when I sign up for it as well as a brief one sentence description because I don't know about you but I forget PDs within a week or two like kind of the gist of what it was about. So I put all the important points just in the one sentence description and then the date I attended it. That way when I go at the end of the year for my review um, I can kind of have some things in my arsenal to show that I try to perfect my practice. Especially this year being my tenure year I really want some um, proof that I really tried to be reflective and improve my teaching. This page I left blank in the bullet journal and I just put a bunch of sticky notes as I'm taking notes of different PDs. So, so instead of taking detailed notes, I usually, if I think the PD is super interesting, I'll put many sticky notes like this blue one. Or if, if it's something I heard before but I picked it up as kind of a filler, um, I, I'll use a smaller sticky note. But this way I can kind of actively take notes and fill this part out as I'm listening to the PD and I'm not losing my notes everywhere. So there's one page dedicated for that. So this is my parent com communications log. This, this comes from Alexandra Plans. Um, I'm really trying to focus on documenting when I make parent content contact. I do make parent contact throughout the year, but I haven't been good at keeping track of every day, like exactly what time I contact them. That way I can reference it for administration in case there's an issue uh, with the student or them passing for the school year. Administration knows that I made at least initial contact, contacts, uh, contact or exactly what went down. So I have a, a note section. The, the relation, this is intended to mean what person I talk to in reference to the student, whether that's the mom, the dad, the grandparents, a, a foster caregiver, uh, a sister. This is important because if administration needs to contact someone for the student, they know exactly who to talk to. The student's name themselves and also the date of contact. So I just also want to mention going back, this is probably won't be submission, so uh, this will not be sufficient for the school year. I'll probably have to add an additional page to this because we're contacting parents all the time. So I don't, I definitely don't think that this spread will be sufficient for the whole school year, but I think it's a good place to start in my setup. So that kind of ends the some of the teacher section. Uh, I'm going to go through all, the rest of August. This is my personal bullet journal set up for my weeks. This is August 13th to the 19th. So this past week I was really bad at my habit tracker. So I only put one habit this week and I really failed. It is to uh, run every day. I'm getting ready for the Savage Race, which is an obstacle course race that's about a 10k and I really need to get into shape. And last week I definitely failed and did not run at all. So <laughs> The cool thing is is that in the bottom margins you can put put habit trackers and reminders and things like that for what you want to do for that week. This is uh, this week so I have my run tracker again. I ran on Monday. Yesterday it rained here in Maryland and then today is Wednesday. I hope to run today but we'll see. So again this is my setup for my my everyday personal life. You're going to see this switch over once school starts. So next week is another teacher work week and I didn't really set up anything as far as lesson plans go but I wanted to do everything ahead of time laying it out because I know next week's going to be really busy setting up my classroom, attending professional developments and other school related setup sessions. 
So this ends August for me, and in fact, it spills a little bit into September 2nd. The next week will start September, and I went ahead, like I said, and planned out my week of September because I know that I'm going to be busy and because I want I know I really want to keep up with this bullet journal even though it, it does take up some time it really doesn't take up that much time when you think about how useful it is in organizing as well as the personalization feature of a bullet journal you're not locked into kind of like a preset notion of your week so I want to keep up with it but I I'm not kidding myself knowing that I'll have all this time the first month of school so I went ahead and planned it ahead of time. This is my kind of my September spread. It was kind of a candy shop theme that I found. Um, this was actually originally a mood tracker that I found on Pinterest where each day of the month there's a gumball and you kind of color in your gumball for the day based on your mood. So for example if you had a happy gum or you had a happy day um you were feeling excited you would put the green gumball in for that day however i'm not really into mood trackers as much i haven't really gotten into it yet but i thought this design was really cute so i just copied that design i'll put the link below in the description but then i put the september uh label on it because this is what i really want to look at when i see uh, my september cover and setting the mood for it over here i have my collage like i said before i printed out some pictures i found online related to the theme and i cut them out and then i doodled in them as well as gave them some color to match i also highlighted some things that i'll be doing this month like i have a savage race coming up and then uh, my husband's great grandfather's birthday is this month um back to school labor day yom kippur these are all Two of these days are days we have off. So I wanted to highlight some of the things that are happening this month. So this is my September month at a glance. I laid this out. I kind of put some, doodled some gumballs up here to keep with the theme. I also have a key down below here that, that gives me that color scheme I was talking about where I, when I fill in the events, I know exactly what color means what category. I also have a note section here in case there's not enough explanation space up in these boxes I can write it down below and explain what I need. So this this page is my very first attempt at a teacher planning spread. So in the past my Erin Condren planner was not did not meet my needs because it had seven periods on it and it, it was kind of the the schedule on the planner did not match my block schedule at my district so i really wanted a better planner that met my individual uh time constraints for my for my district so at my school we have four periods every day um and then i, I and i included an after school section so on the left hand side here i have tabs first second third and fourth for each period as well as a later section for after school meetings or professional development or just things I have to do at home. At the top here I have the day of the week, I have the date, and then as you can see school hasn't started yet on this Monday because it's Labor Day, but once school starts, for example school starts for all students on Wednesday uh, 9 5. I also put an indicator here that has the block schedule letter so that says A because it's an A block day and then the day of the quarter for that class so for, for so I have number one so this is the first A day of the quarter whereas the next day I have B1 because it's the first B day of the quarter after that I pick up with A day again and then have the second day so A2 so that's how I'm going to keep track of the day of the week the block the day of or the block day as well as the day of the quarter for that class up here by the week indicator i also have which week of the school year it is so i have week one here kind of small so that i can remember where we are in the school year and and how much time we have left so like I said before, I planned out the rest of the month of September, just giving myself some layouts that I already completed. I do have my weekend calendar on here and it can, 
I'm going to let it be constrained by the block schedule as well, but it'll probably be like morning, noon, afternoon, evening, and night as a setup for my weekend. And I did put an indicator here that says weekend that separates my school week with my, my two days off that I have on the weekend. So this is the rest of, of the month of September. I have a school closing for Yom Kippur. And then lastly, this is my last page that I'll be showing you today. Um, this is my notes page for school. So I have week one, week two, week three, week four. I'm dividing the page or the spread into four sections so that when I'm at meetings or I'm at a, um, a school improvement committee meeting or any meetings, I can just take notes and keep them here. That way everything is in my planner because I really hate carrying a planner with me and then not putting notes in it or shoving them into the cover and they get lost. So I really want everything in one spot. That's what I really love about bullet journals as opposed to carrying around it. Um, I don't know, my teacher planner and my personal planner. I can keep everything in this one central location. So because I have so many pages, I still have a ton of pages left. I'm hoping that I won't run out before the school year's ends. But if I do, I can always get another $5 journal since these are pretty inexpensive. Um, so lastly, what I wanted to talk about briefly is share with you guys for this artist loft journal what pens work the best with this journal so these are my two favorites so the first pen that i really like is the pigma micron pen i actually have a multi-pack of these in all the different sizes um, i really like the 05 pen for drawing lines i also have an 03 pen which is really great for writing in um, all of my tasks and all my word details. I also bought the multi-pack which includes the .01 pen which is very small but it's very useful in if I have a really small space I need to write in or write a couple of words that pen is so fine it fits into that section. So I love these pens. They don't bleed through the page. Um, they don't when you rub your hand over it, they really don't smudge that often. They they really seem to stay in place without fading. So if you're going with this Artist Loft Journal or even a Loic Term, this is a really good pen, um, a, a good black drawing pen, um, as well as just for writing regular um, tasking. All right, so the next pen that I want to talk about is the Tombow pens. So these pens come in different styles. This is the um, felt tip on one side and the fine tip on the other. I bought this in a multi-pack of all the pastel colors. That way I can go through and add accent details and color throughout my art journal. These do not bleed through for the most part, um, unless you're really just like coloring over and over and over and over again. It's not going to really bleed through. There might be some ghosting, but this is a great pen um, or set of pens to add accent colors to your your bullet journal. I would also keep an eye out for the the calligraphy Tombos. Those are really light and good for accents. So if you're wanting to add details to your calendar or shadowing, the calligraphy pens also are great because they're water-based. Um, they're almost watercolor pens, I would say, and they, they add just a faint hint of color to your bullet journal. All right, guys, so that's it for me today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my bullet journal setup video. Like I said, a lot of collaboration, or not collaboration, like I said, a lot of inspiration went into this journal from other sources, and I'm going to put all the links in the description below as well as uh, space out some cards throughout this video so that you can look at those ideas and get started on your own bullet journal. Be sure to like and subscribe and remember learn often, teach well, and I will see you in my next video.